Hey guys, it's Chloe with Solozo here today with Brendan Riley, who is one of the co-founders of Lelix. Hey Brendan. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Great. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Just <laughs> excited uh, to be uh, talking with you guys and uh, talking about selling stuff to people. Oh yes. Yeah. So Brendan's gonna give us a bit of background to start about his company. Um, but the reason we wanted him here today is because as Amazon sellers. We're always talking about how we can really dig into uh, buyer behavior and what we can expect from our consumers and people shopping on Amazon, how to make our product listings more likable, all that good stuff. So um, this is a bit of a different take on this and a lot more in depth, um, but it's super fascinating. Um, so we're gonna get away. like super geeky really <laughs> fast. So um, so so what Lelex does is we uncover why do humans buy the things they buy. And to understand that, you need to understand like why do they make the decisions they make and then why do they behave the way they behave. And a lot of it, if you think of every decision we make as like a, think of it as like a math formula, right? Mm -hmm. So each variable in that formula, it, it's not, we're not robots, we're not binary. It's, it's a mixed bag of a lot of different things that have made who you are who you are today. So that's everything from your the encoding events throughout your life, which is... Um, where you grew up, the type of familial unit you grew up in, how life treated you as a three-year-old, how life treated you as a sophomore in high school. And understanding all of the intricate things, you know, from the TV shows you watch to the content you consumed to the, you know, university you went to. And understanding, like, all variables like those encoding events, along with affectation. So um, affectation is starting to understand that as an individual, you want to be perceived by the world in a very specific way. Like right now, I want you guys and you guys to think that I'm like a really smart guy because I'm on camera and I have to present myself as like a smart guy. Mm -hmm. But really, there's there's masks we wear throughout the day. I wear a dad mask, I wear a, a husband mask, I wear an executive mask. And it's understanding that there are certain behaviors that I'm going to elicit as an individual that I think are appropriate to behave in wearing those masks. And so the affectation that I'm presenting to the world and you're presenting to the world, by understanding all of the, the multi-variables in that math formula that speak to those encoding events and the affectation of individuals, we start to decode how humans are actually making their decisions on seemingly innocuous things, from buying hoses online to buying shoes. So, um, what we do is decode all of that and then break that down so people that are in marketing, growth, and sales can, can understand how to provide better value to their customers in a, in a, um, in a, and reach the business goals that they're trying to reach. Awesome. So what is the actual product that you're selling? So I'll, I'll explain a little bit of the process. Okay. I won't get too, too geeky on you, but uh -huh. I'll, I'll explain a little bit of the process and then, and then walk through the, like, what we're delivering our partners. Okay. So it's really, if you think of it as um, hundreds of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and natural language processing modules. Okay. So each one of those modules is designed to comb through massive sets of data. You have social media and you have um, blog posts of a, blo a mom in um, Seattle writing about, uh, let's say you're selling, let's just say, what do you want to sell online? Let's let's give an example. Um, what's something super popular in right now? Um, fidget spinner. Fidget spinner. Okay, that is, it's... <laughs> Don't uh, sell fidget spinners. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. So, you know, there's there's communication, there's pictures, there's images, there's videos, mm -hmm. um, there's even audio of podcasts, mm -hmm. people talking about fidget spinners, and that's kind of like the active universe. And then there's a whole other universe of like newspaper articles being written, mm -hmm. um, this type of content, which I'll, I'll, I'll call vlog or blogging. Mm -hmm. And then there's a whole host of other uh, set of information that reside in research. So there's like, there's not research on fidget spinners. There might be, but there's a whole bunch of research on like what fidget spinners, you know, the job that they claim that they're hiring that they do. Mm -hmm. There's all psychology types of, yeah, the psychology behind all of that. And then understanding like how have people bought things like fidget spinners for the last 100 years? Mm -hmm. 
and all of that information we're bringing in, and each one of those modules, going back to the AI systems, mm -hmm. they are individually focused on doing a very specific task that comb and sort through all of that information that then get put into a series of artificial neural networks, which is really fancy for, for basically, think of it as human brain replicas. Mm -hmm. And it is there that we're able to give that to our partner. In this case, we would help you sell more fidget spinners mm -hmm. by saying, here's the real job that that product is hired to do. And, and, um, and this goes for anything. This goes for shoes, this goes for cars, mortgages. Your, the, the job your product is hired to do is not necessarily what is being promoted. It is, uh, for instance, fidget spinner. You may want a fidget spinner as an eight-year-old mm -hmm. because you want to fit in at school because all the other kids are having it. Mm -hmm. Well, the job that that is hired to do is fitting in, not oh, fidget and uh -huh, spin. Uh -huh. So that's a really a bad example, but that's no, yeah, an example. Uh -huh. That was on the fly with fidget spinners. <laughs> Um, but that's that. That's kind of so we're we're able to understand a populace, mm -hmm. and then dive dive into the subconscious of that populace and let you see, hey, what is the job like the why behind that behavior? What job is that product actually hired to do? And then how can you better add value in your marketing messages, in your copy, in your creative, to and and even your product to better speak to the the high value groups of people that you're trying to convert. Got it. Oh, that's fascinating. It is, it is. Every day my brain hurts a little more. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, so tell me a little bit about how the company is doing and growing. Yeah. So we spent the better part of 2018 just like doing the... So I started a couple companies. It's going to take just like a second to write that out for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it sounds easy. Yeah. Actually, actually, we'll go back 10 years. So okay. Rich is our chief science officer and okay. my other partner, Dan Scott. So I'll get to Dan here in a second. But Rich... Um, coined the term digital sociology and it, uh, he's a scientist he's an mm -hmm. algorist mm -hmm. and his whole thing was um, there's at the time there was these like at, at the time really interesting looking uh, social media listening mm -hmm. and the output of these programs were like thumbs up sideways and down and that was kind of like they, you would be able to by, by analyzing social media behavior you could understand like hey your product has a very positive sentiment. Mm -hmm. And what Rich started realizing was there's, there's more, for, like social media is just here, but we have all of this other information. How do we make sense of all this other information? Most importantly, the research that's documented about mm -hmm. what we know as humans and why we behave. And it was, it was 10 years ago, he wrote this book called Thematic Research, and it was um, understanding that like social media listening is, is the first step towards this like, amazing evolution of understanding humans by all the content we're volunteering on a daily basis. So it really began 10 years ago and it's, it's because of Rich. But then you fast forward to, um, to when Dan, Rich and I all got together and we, we started to see, um, Dan and I had run our own marketing. We'd, have, we'd, we'd even sold stuff on Amazon. I wish I would have known you guys existed there <laughs> because oh, that is a wild, world <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing um so let's look at help yes <laughs> so um th we used 2018 really talking to chief marketing officers primarily large organizations saying like hey, walk us through your blind spots if you could if you really could have access to a black box that you could ask any question or query any type of event or or even simulate any type of simulation for media mix modeling or creative testing like what would you do with that what budget would this come against and i just can't tell you how like we probably talked to like hundreds if not thousands of people and it was like whoa you know this is like too good to be true like uh -huh. you, you guys this is this isn't real and we, we went through like nine months of that and we finally figured out how to productize it in a way that made sense and and really i'll probably say it a bunch of times today but like we really were honest with ourselves about where we were providing value. We actually used the program for our own purposes to understand, ah, here's where we can add value in, this, in, in the marketing process. And so now we work with 14 Fortune 500 companies 
by the end of this month, hopefully it's 20, we're, we're getting there. Oh, wow, so quick um, growth. Quick growth, yeah. but nine months of nothing. Yes. And, and like yeah. insanely painful and nothing I've ever sold. I, like I said, I run some companies, Rich and Dana run companies, and like you got to put in the work in the you know early days. Mm-hmm. And, and we'll go through some growing pains, but we're, we are seeing uh, exciting growth. Mm-hmm. So as you started working with these companies, um, what are some things that you have learned about buyer behavior that you have found surprising? Ooh, uh, I gotta think of what I can <laughs> share. So there's a, there's a couple, I'd say, um, interesting trends. Let's talk high level trends. Okay. Um, Cause we were starting to see this across a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. Um, one is, is how are our, meaning humans, intrinsic needs are met and how technology is affecting our own intrinsic needs. And I think the when you start to understand this and whether you're selling water bottles or whether you're selling, you know, I was going to have shoes, whether you're selling shoes online, like understanding that that um, uh, your product is, is likely going to either, if you understand how to position it, it's going to benefit in a big way from this trend. But the first one is is like the era of complacency. Mm-hmm. And that's that's this thing like I can, and in fact I bought a hose last night for my dehumidifier on Amazon. And and I like know nothing about dehumidifiers, but I was like, ah, I can always return it. And like three years ago, I don't know if I would have thought like that. I, yeah. I probably would have been like, no, I still need to go to the hardware store and figure this out. Mm-hmm. Um, but whether it's your food or your, um, heck, your lawn you know, service or really anything, you can now just go to Amazon and get it. Mm-hmm. And so the Amazonification of the world, I think we haven't quite, like, you know, Barnes and Noble will say, Ooh, we felt it. But yeah. the rest of like, it is, it is very real. And it's because now you can, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, a food delivery or whatever, you can get that, you know, to you. And we're starting to see that, that, um, socialization or that connectivity really have impact on behaviors beyond just like, clicking a button and getting products into my house. Mm-hmm. One, one thing we uncovered recently was uh, across a lot of different projects was volunteerism, like people going out and volunteering for like your church or, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. uh, your youth organization that is going like dramatically declining. Really? And it's like, wait, but why is, why is that? And once we started peeling back the layers of the onion, we started realizing that our needs are being met by liking, like my need to belong to a cause is by seeing, I'm like really interested in like World Earth Day and stuff, is like I'm meeting my personal, going back to the encoding and the mm-hmm. affectation by liking something. Oh wow, that's interesting. So so as a brand, these big like Goliath brands whose existence came of age in the industrial age, they're starting to go, oh wow, like the game has totally changed. Mm-hmm. And like understanding, we'll say those dominoes that are driving individuals' behavior on not just like, oh, it's the millennials' fault, like yeah. you always yeah. but but like across all segments of the population, and it's, you know, I you could say it's at fault, I say it's progression, is like technology's influence on humanity and what is really driving a lot of the good and bad changes. So... Um, I'd say those are kind of like two of the things that we're starting to see like really, really interesting is like how we're all meeting our needs um, intrinsically, not not like you still got to eat and you got to like yeah. have a roof, but like how what we think drives us to make us happy and our behaviors to achieve that. Mm-hmm. Um, those are, are being met in, in ways that they weren't being met even five years ago. So you have this like insane shift in, in every marketplace from mortgages to cars to selling shoes online, um, that we're starting to see like, whoa, you really have to pay attention. Um, and really, I think the, the answer is find people or organizations that know how to do something better than you know how to. If you're the world's best ex- expert in selling products on Amazon, well then you're the world's best expert. You're probably not. So <laughs> like find organizations like you guys, like mm-hmm. find people that can fill that and, and really hold your hand through the change. Mm-hmm. I think that's been the most interesting across all of our partners that we've seen. Awesome. So one thing I also wanted to ask you, um, as Amazon sellers, we're often talking about Amazon as this big behemoth and saying AI, artificial intelligence. Yes. I know that you've used that term a few times. 
can you, you're really gonna explain really complicated things. Can you tell us like yeah. what AI actually is? Yeah, so think of AI, I always make this, I always give this example. So you would not believe how many times, cause I'm the, I'm the guy that has to like pick up the phone and like have the initial conversation yeah. in our company. And it, I, like so many executives will say to me, oh, 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 we do the AI. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, you do the AI. Like it's, think of it as a shovel, okay? Uh-huh. So you don't, you don't, do a shovel, you you make a garden or you mm-hmm. dig a hole. Mm-hmm. You use that shovel to dig the hole and to build the garden, but you don't do the shovel. Like <laughs> the shovel is the shovel, it's a tool to help you execute all of these things. So right now, where we are in 2019 is we're um, fantastic modules, and that's how I, I refer to them, is whether it's natural language processing or machine learning or artificial intelligence, they are modules that expedite and automate certain tasks, very specific tasks. And what we've done is we have lots, we'll just say a hundred, but it's more than that. But it's a hundred AI modules that have a very specific task to go through all of that large set of data to make sense of it in a way that goes into our computer systems in the algorithms that um, we've built out to then get the outputs associated with the human behavior. So. We, so to understand where we are today, I think is the first thing. Now, where we could be in 10 years, mm-hmm. where we could be in, honestly, five years mm-hmm. is really, really exciting. And, and that's where, you ever see Westworld? Yes. I always, okay. <laughs> yeah. I call, I call Rich Bernard. Uh-huh. Um, so <laughs> if you understand the encoding in every decision in which humans are made, mm-hmm. And we're, we're just now getting to try out a neuronal Turing machine, which I, I won't even, it's basically replicating humans in their memory. Uh-huh. And you can understand time, place, events, and, and the, we'll say the concept of time, therefore mm-hmm. develop a, mem- a memory. Then you truly are at the doorstep of being able to create sentient AI. So wow. we are... Um, does that excite you or it, it thrills me <laughs> yeah I, i'm a geek so it does now there's a there, there, that leap is is there's some pretty yeah. big it's a big jump to get to a fully fleshed out like mm-hmm. you know westworld theme park <laughs> yeah but um to think of the ramifications of what how hollywood personifies ai today like mm-hmm. ex machina and westworld and mm-hmm. You know, we got the crazy, crazy. Like, now that's scary. Like, yeah, that, that's scary. That's, I, I hate scary movies. I, at the end of that, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, but when you when you think about the ramifications of where we are today and how fast, like Moore's law, which is um, computational speed, doubles every year, mm-hmm. every eighteen months. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're if that trajectory, you know, truly keeps going the way we're going then we will hit a day and not like, oh, we'll hit a day in like 40 years. Yeah. We'll hit a day in the next decade that there is really quantum leaps being done. So there's kind of like uh, in the AI community, there's all these different factions of people who, are, who like think this can be done and this can be done. Uh-huh. But when you, when you uh, marry and, and look at the evolution of how fast things are moving, mm-hmm. there's no doubt that at some day that will happen. So the, the future is exciting. Um, I'm a geek and yeah. that excites me. But where we are today even and being able to understand, you know, we'll say humans and their behavior, just that alone, we don't, like, we're so far from sentience that mm-hmm. that alone is just powerful enough to, to, to be, like, game changer. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so wild to think about. Okay, coming back to um, a term you can probably understand a little bit more. Um, tell us about marketing assumptions. Ooh, my favorite. Uh, <laughs> so, a lot of the t- people we talk to, these are like high level executives at big Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies. Mm-hmm. And um, they have, as a human, mm-hmm. okay, well, let's take a step back. As a human, you asking a question to find an answer. Let's say you sell, um, you know, water bottles. You're you have you're a water bottle expert. That's your company. That's everything you know about. You have just because you're a human. It's not your fault. You have all of this, all of these assumptions, which are a mixed bag of your time in the water bottle industry and your time as a marketing exec. And it's those encoding events that you've experienced that drive your decisions as it relates to the questions you should be asking. Mm-hmm. 
just by asking a question, let's call it survey, poll, or focus group based, you know, type feedback, you're, you're coming just by asking the question. There's 26 inherent biases associated with that. So already, before you even give any type of answer back, it's flawed information. Mm -hmm. So when we when we work with marketing execs, um, we're always kind of like, are we allowed to tell you the truth? Like, because because often we'll get asked. Uh, there was a, a marketing exec, and I'll I'll change the industry. They came to us and they said, hey, the color of the shoes wrong, and the materials wrong. Our sales are declining, and and we can't figure out why in North America why is the, why is a shoe not selling like it used to sell. And we built out the parallel universe and we figured out all this information. And what our response back to them was first, hey, are you prepared to learn that it's not the color? And if your problem is not the material. Your problem is you're trying to sell, um, uh, you, you, need, you should be selling socks with the shoes. For some reason, uh, that country had a lot of immigrants move into the country and they, that's how they bought shoes in their home country is they want socks with their shoes. And it has to be this kind of sock because it makes your shoes so much more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And you're missing that and that's why the sales are declining. And I, I think that was the most like, oh, wow moment for us was we sat down with that Consumer Insight um, director and she goes... So I'm asking you about the color of the shoe and you're telling me I need to be selling socks with the shoe. She's like, everyone else in the world would have given me insights related to the color mm -hmm. of the shoe. Mm -hmm. They'd be like, ooh, they like red, not blue. Yeah. You need to really bump up the red you know, marketing. Uh -huh. And you're here telling me that like Look something way over here is like not even in the zip code. So um, how do we protect and think of, I always tell people, think of Lilex as kind of like an insurance policy against your own knowledge. So like, how do we protect ourselves as humans by not mistaking the mistakes we make as humans mm -hmm. in our decision-making process? And to do that, you have to eliminate all bias. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that is of course, buy a lot of stuff from us. But, <laughs> but the only way to do that is like, look at humans from the context of a researcher mm -hmm. and then be able to comb through that information and be able to be honest with yourself with what that output is. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what we're able to provide. So the marketing assumption, it's only, like I said, it's kind of like a, a little touchy subject when we get with people, but once, you know, there's some delivery in that information and once they start working with us, they start seeing like, we're not here to like make them feel, you know, bad or anything. It, mm -hmm. it, we're truly, our goal is to make the consumer insight person or make the chief marketing officer look like a genius. Mm -hmm. And if we're doing our job and we're doing it right, that will be the outcome. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's working so far. Good. <laughs> so, so yeah, so it's, um, uh, I think the biases and assumptions and then understanding like mathematically everything associated with that mm -hmm. is, um, has been a big learning curve for me. Cause I, 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 you talk to a fortune 10 company and you think there's no way they don't know this information. Yeah. And then you, you get done and you're like, Oh wow. And it's not me. It's rich. It's, yeah. it's the science <laughs> team, but really the, uh, when you're able to deliver on that information, it, it makes for a really good relationship. All right, that's awesome. So are there any other insights or final words you want to leave us with? Yeah, I think the biggest thing would be like, whether you're selling on Amazon, whether you're selling, uh, you own a car wash and you're trying to get people to come to your car wash, um, or you're, you're doing what we're doing and you're selling like B2B services and, and software, I think, like keep in mind that at the end of the day you exist and this was like a big deal for me and in all the companies i've run is you exist to provide value to someone else you don't exist to run your own company um you, you don't exist for you and and um that is like a really big paradigm shift so especially like you know if you if you are selling stuff on amazon or like i said doing what we're doing like you're providing value. You're making someone's life better, cheaper, or easier. And you're providing value to those individuals. And I think a lot of the times that gets overlooked because we, we see the dollar signs and we see all these things that like, oh, they'd be, and as humans, so I've learned, we, we often choose the path of least resistance. So when doing any new endeavor, where there's like this like, oh, I'll try it. And you kind of throw like, you may even try really hard. But, but then it, it, it may not, you know, work immediately. 
like if if you really truly can make someone's life better, cheaper, or easier, then focus on how to continually understand, pay attention to, and and I think that's another thing. Like how do you how do you pay attention? Like there's no rule book to that. Mm -hmm. To really understand, it, I think the the biggest answer is to listen. Like mm -hmm. if if you're selling stuff on Amazon, have your mom sit down. Watch your mom in front of the computer and, and be like, and don't say, tell her anything. Just watch what she does. Like, try to try to understand the person on the other end of the computer mm -hmm. and what's going through their mind. And and that's kind of like a, a very basic level consumer insights, you know, uh -huh. way to do it. Um, but it's often overlooked and it's the simple things too that can... Blows my mind. Yeah. And, and I think for me, it was like a mixed bag of like reading a bunch of books and then understanding like, oh... Like, I'm only going to be successful if people love my product and come back and buy it more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And it, you can only do that by understanding that you're making someone's day when they buy your water bottle online. Yeah. So I'd say that. I'd say focus, like, in everything you do. And if it's automated, if there's a lot of pieces of it that are automated, like, awesome. That's even better. Makes your life easier. Mm -hmm. Affect the things you can affect by making people's life better be observant you know watch what people do in the grocery store what mm -hmm. what products they buy watch what people do at walmart and, and be like the little things like that and being in tune with the people around you will actually you'll be surprised and give you a lot of answers to whatever you're trying to accomplish you know whatever business endeavor you're doing good advice that's it i like it well thank you so much brendan it yeah was awesome thank having you, you. Uh, we will provide a link to Wellix, um, the website, probably the Facebook page, um, down below the video. So go ahead and check that out. And that's all we have for you. All right. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah. And uh, see you guys around FlexPod.